Welcome to the Isolation Podcast with the Three Amigos, brought to you by Circles of Rhythm. Take it away, John. Come on. Thank you, Julian. Thank you very much, John. <laughs> hey, how's it going? Good. That was a nice little intro. Pretty good. You know what, J John, you had a nice little groove going on there, buddy. It was really nice. I, uh, I always appreciate when Alan takes it up a notch and just this week he put on a pair of shades. Like, that man is so cool. You it's know what, I, I just didn't want to talk about how cool he was. I, th I, th I think he's just looking for attention. <laughs> <laughs> Don't well, feed into it, man. So I was, uh, sorry, go ahead. My, uh, my wife asked me, she said, why are you wearing sunglasses? <laughs> and I said, because this is take number 28 um, <clears throat> without sunglasses. And I look like a doofus because my <laughs> eyes are closed. And I thought, that doesn't look good. So now I, but I can't drum with my eyes open. So I put sunglasses on and now you can't tell that my eyes are closed. Do you drum with your eyes closed? Most of the time, yeah. Man, I've yeah. never noticed that before. Yep. Yeah. It's uh, is it Real because awesome. is it because there's ugly people in the room? That's why you're just like <laughs> I'm the only one, I'm the only one in the room. <laughs> so so more and to it, my more to my point. I'm just saying. I'm there's just, no mirrors. He doesn't want to see himself. There's no ah! mirror. You know, I, actually, all, kid, all kidding aside, I actually really enjoy closing my eyes when I play music. Um, yeah. I find that it's, it's a nice way to disconnect and just to um, get lost in, in the rhythm or get lost in the music. And, and uh, so I encourage anybody who's tuning in for the first time, welcome to the podcast. My name is Julian. Um, close your eyes next time you play music. Next time you listen to music, <laughs> close your eyes. Um, I just, I, Alan, I just really like your hat. What the heck's up with that? I don't know. I just came in here and I saw it lying in one of my music cases. I thought I'd put it on. It's an old hat. Is it an Australian hat or is it a cowboy hat? No, it's, it's a, well, I suppose a, both are the same. Hold, right? hold on a second. John, say cowboy again. Cowboy. No, no, say cowboy. Cowboy. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. I knew what you meant. Cowboy. He's like cowboy. Cowboy. <laughs> I I can I man, it's funny when I when I go back home to Wales, my mates my mates say to me, Mister Canadian. Oh my god! And then I'm like, I, I do not say Canadian. Oh my god! Eh? And and I come back to Canada, and everyone can't understand me. They're like, slow down. So. Maybe one, one podcast, I'll do a podcast with my thick Welsh accent and we'll see if anybody can understand. So what you're saying is right now is not your thick Welsh, Welsh accent. No, this has got a bit of a Canadian twang to it. It is. It is very Canadian. Oh, thanks. A eh? double double. Tim Hortons, eh, buds? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so where'd your, where'd your hat come from, Alan? I think it's my dad's hat. My dad died in 1985. Hey, my dad was a cowboy. There you go. Actually, my dad, my dad was a jockey. So he, he, he trained horses. No, no, he didn't train. He rode. He rode. Yeah, he rode. He rode actually as far as Seattle. Uh, my brother just sent me on, that means on uh, text. <laughs> my brother just sent me on the text. Uh, the papers from when my dad was 17 years old. He hopped on a train and they took five horses to Seattle as a 17 year old to race. Oh, cool. <laughs> it was really cool. Yeah, I, I had never seen the papers. I, I just saw them uh, last week. Interesting. That's cool. Yeah. That's Bobby cool. Weeks. 
So guys, this week we have a, a pretty amazing uh, guest joining us. Alan, you've met him before. We've done some work with Mr. Paul Puzanowski uh, today. Um, and John, you just met him today. Um, but just it's a quick, quick, quick introduction for those who have never met him before. Um, uh, I asked Alan to do the introduction and he said, uh, all I would say is this is Paul. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's so enough. I don't know. <laughs> so by process of elimination, I'm doing the introduction. Uh, so this is Paul. He's he's a. I met him when uh, when he was organizing this uh, new wellness retreat, um, kind of a weekend retreat in Banff. He did this amazing uh, thing called the Wub Gathering. W U B. You should check it out. We'll put information in the the comments or the link in the description after the. This video is up and, and uh, posted forever in the, the rest of the time. But um, yeah, he did this WUB gathering in Banff and at the Center for the Arts. And it was absolutely amazing. This guy is an entrepreneur. He is a, uh, a human being that has a heart set on helping others heal and facilitating the healing process by creating a space and bringing people together um, in a way that um, promotes healing, that promotes um, transformation um, and uh, growth. And, um, and so, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, Mr. Paul Puzanowski. Here we go. Hey, guys. Thanks for the intro, Julian. And uh, yeah, I appreciate that. Basically, to sum it up, I, I have a passion for, I always joke, and you guys have heard this, I, I like to make people cry. So <laughs> it's... Uh, you know, those big transformational moments, those big shifts in your life. And I, I think we've all been, you know, many of us have been, whether we've had a few in our life already, we're kind of all forced into one right now with uh, the way things are in the world. And so, um, yeah, hopefully when, when we're all free again, we can gather in person and connect and, uh, you know, shed, shed some light on the situation and, and some healing and, and go from there. So, uh, so yeah. Paul, when you say you like to make people cry, you usually put on the tag for all the right reasons. Yeah, no, no, I'm in quarantine now. I don't care. I'm just kidding. <laughs> the good but, tears, you know, the those those big transformational shifts, and and I've gone through it in my life, which uh, we've talked about, uh, Julian and I and and Alan as well. You know, we've been on plenty of calls before doing different projects, and you know, working with veterans and first responders to. Uh, different retreats and groups but um, it's it, it is really my passion and it came from kind of my own uh, my own crisis if you will and my own kind of hitting you know shit hitting the fan and and kind of finding myself miserable and, and seeking for something bigger bigger than myself um, and purpose and whatever else you want to call it you know just something right you know and I, and I feel like there's a lot of people feeling that right now and so it's important to you know have these kinds of tools and learn them and you know connect so i'm i'm happy to, to chat about mental health or drumming or whatever wherever the hell we're going where julian said you know just don't 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 prepare much we're just gonna talk like we normally do so that's that, the plan, so. that's what it's all about <laughs> you know and and paul i said you know let's just talk a little bit about mental health and mental wellness and making people helping people change and evolve and you're like Oh yeah, I got all that shit. I can talk about that shit all day. <laughs> so there you go. So um, Paul, so transformational tears, helping people grow and evolve and change. Um, maybe we'll dip into your own personal growth story, but tell me a little bit about, um, or tell not just me, but tell the rest of the people tuning in a little bit about what you've been up to these last few days. Oh, uh, last few days. Okay. Yeah, the last few days have been interesting. So like, like everybody, it's been kind of a roller coaster ride of, um, of emotions uh, up and down. And you know, you name it. I, obviously, it's, uh, you know, the, the names are the, the words in the name gathering, right? So obviously, anything that we had coming up has been um, put on hold, you know, until who knows when, right? So I feel like it's the Mad Hatter. Change places. <laughs> Change nobody, hats. nobody knows we're changing hats. We're <laughs> listening to you. Don't watch right. what we're doing. Oh, I don't know. I don't know if people can see you changing hats. Just to mess with me, right? See, if, see how focused I am. But uh, 
yeah so so like like anybody you know I, I have five kids so that's interesting to all of a sudden they're off school and they're going through a lot of grief um like a lot of people so there's a lot of loss involved with um kind of a loss of freedom if you will and identity um and and so i was going through a lot of that myself and then also you know slippery slopes down the rabbit hole of you know conspiracy theories and you name it of everything like just a lot of really negative energy and and so uh we've talked to before about kind of your your diet right so what what are you taking in so and that's not just what you're eating but also what you're watching and what you're consuming and so i yeah i was making myself miserable going down the rabbit hole so I made a choice where, um, so I do week on week off with my kids and ended up because I was a little sick, didn't take any chances. So I ended up with some extra time this week. So I was able to um, take some time for myself and kind of practice what I preach, if you will. And so I, I did a little self-led meditation retreat at home here. So I unplugged my modem, um, turned off my phone and and kind of did just kind of went inward which uh, um, we were talking a bit before we went live here with you know being a parent and you know for years like I was thinking about it and it's probably been 16 years or so since I really had like you know real time to myself if that makes sense where I wasn't worried about running a business or um, you know supporting my kids or family or whatever it might be so it was it was a really cool experience to kind of go inward and you know, if anybody, um, I, I do plan on putting some details and just some ideas around that so we can share that once I get around to doing that. But uh, um, yeah, just little things, you know, important to tell your family what you're doing too. <laughs> so, so I know my mom would probably be like, you, you know, the cops would be busting down the door after a couple of days of uh, not hearing from me going, what, what happened to my son, right? I normally talk to him every day, but yeah. Uh, but, so are you, uh, are you still working, Paul? Are you still are you working from um, home currently, or are you? Yeah, I mean, I, I I'm kind of lucky in a way. Like I I've worked from home for eight years, so I mean, all all I do is uh, usually I'm at home or I'm on a retreat or you know doing an event or something. But um, but basically everything I do involves people gathering in person, so it, it's kind of all on hold. So I I've really taken this um, not to downplay what's happening in the world and other people's struggles I've, I've kind of tried to turn you know uh lemons into lemonade if you will and and take an opportunity that i don't normally get to you know go inward if, and so so yeah so i spent uh you know four days so saturday till yesterday um and just uh kind of silence and so no talking no communication no nothing and um did a little bit of uh you know yoga every morning meditation breath work a little bit of dancing, um, you know, downloaded some playlists beforehand <laughs> so I wouldn't have to get distracted. Um, when and, you describe this, Paul, like I'm, I, I get emotional. I get kind of welled up. Like that's, that's commitment. And, uh, and maybe I'm getting welled up because I'm like super jealous and I'm like, I wish I could do that. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, carry on. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. But that must have been a challenge. Did was there a moment where in that process you wanted to kind of just pull the plug? Um yes and no. I mean, it's there's, you know, people that we communicate with regularly that we, you know, normally want to talk to and so it's more of kind of breaking habits. I'm kind of weird for uh I like a challenge, so like I I love kind of sitting in my shit if you will and and uh I I I feel like you know, all emotions are valid. So it's important to kind of dive into, you know, dive into those uncomfortable places. So, I mean, there, there were times where, um, you know, I, I thought about quitting earlier, or, you know, but um, yeah, I think also from, you know, working from home for eight years, you get pretty self-disciplined or, or you'd never get anything done, but, uh, but it was good. And I also, I've worked over the years, uh, one of the biggest challenges with my own crisis and what led me down my journey, you know, 13, 14 years ago was being really hard on myself. So um, I've, I've really learned to forgive myself, if you will, but also be, but be easy on myself, right? Like rather than go, okay, I wanted to do yoga twice a day. I wanted to meditate four or five hours. Uh, I wanted to do a breath work. I wanted to only eat this. Um, and, and I'll give you one example. So 
um, on time doesn't matter. So whatever, one of the nights <laughs> doesn't exist anymore. But uh, one of the nights, you know, I, I uh, did, I had a really, really good day grounding. And then I uh, went, went out back and was having a big bonfire, you know, just to sit and stare at the fire and did um, recommend this to anybody too. did a bit of a releasing around just words and things that weren't serving me anymore. So wrote down a bunch of little notes, if you will, um, of, um, you know, for lack of a better term, like trigger words or things that I, di I didn't want to deal with anymore. Um, but I also like, originally I wasn't going to plan on, you know, drinking or anything like that, but I was like, you know what? Like, so I, I, one of the things was I checked in with myself on why I was doing that. And it was, was well, that, is that because after the retreat, I can have my ego and say like, but I didn't drink. And, you know, it's kind of this like high and mighty bullshit, if you will. Right. Where, um, so anyhow, long story short, I was like, oh, you know what? I want to have an old fashioned. I was craving an old fashioned. I wanted to sit around the fire and have a drink, which to me is like, that's my happy place, you know? And for a lot of people it is, and, and everything's in balance, right? You know, like I didn't sit there and chug back, you know, a two six of, of bourbon, right? <laughs> but like, you know, I had, had a couple old fashions and it was great. And, you know, before, before I did that, um, you know, I made sure I, I did my kind of grounding and letting go of the things that weren't serving me and that check-in too of what's my relationship with having a drink, if that makes sense. So, um, so yeah, I don't know where I'm going with that, but it was, it was that, that was probably one of the challenges, but it was really acknowledging challenges and, and validating emotions, right? And Which I, I think I a lot of parents are going through right now. Um, like, I hear you. I think, um, like, I'll, I'll come out and say it, I've bought a couple of bottles of rum since we've been in lockdown and it's just, um, you know, it's, there's nothing wrong with that. And, and, but just, you know, being okay with it. And, but there's a lot of parents out there currently um, that, and coming back to like the time and taking time for yourself. Um, I, I'm still working during the day. My wife is at home. My wife is holding down the fort. She's, she's like queen bee at the moment. And and I take my hat off to her. And when I come home, um, I'm, I'm still kind of in work mode and I, and I need to transition. And I don't know, uh, Julian, you can probably, and, you, and Paul, you can probably relate to this too. With young kids, you walk through the door and the kids are like, Daddy, play with I, me. I, 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 yeah. I can relate to that too, John. Yeah. Not, I'm not that old. <laughs> You still oh, remember yeah. your children, eh? <laughs> <You're> saying, yeah. <laughs> I'm oh, talking like to that. Yeah. I'm talking like young kids. But yes, Alan, you probably experienced it too. And I didn't refer to you because your kids are older, but um, I'm teasing. But yeah, I know you're teasing me. Um, I, I just want—I just want to know, though. Yeah. The, the the couple bottles of rum you didn't buy it for you. You bought it for your wife. No, it was for me and my wife. Oh, me and my wife. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> sure, John. So let's get back to point here. We're, Alex. We're, so, this this uh, <laughs> podcast has taken a turn uh, for, for the intervention. Uh, yeah. Community. That's okay. <laughs> so there's a lot of parents out there that like they, they struggle to find time to take that break for themselves. And, and almost kind of when the kids have gone to bed and you have that hour um, for me and my wife, and I'm sure many of the parents out there, um, it's almost kind of that feeling of, I, I can't take time for myself because this needs to be done or the washing needs to be done. And so what would you say to parents, um, right now in this moment in time, how would you encourage them to take some time for themselves and to do some self healing? And, and I mean, you've given us some excellent examples so far, but how would you, you know, if you had a few parents in front of you now that really couldn't flip the switch, like how would you encourage them to to take time for themselves and without feeling guilty, I suppose. Rum and Coke. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's a load of, that's a tough one. So uh, first I'm going to start by saying, I don't know shit. I always said, if I had my own podcast, it would be the, I don't know shit podcast. So it's, here's just my experience. And you know, a man who knows something knows, he knows nothing at all. Um, so, you know, it's anybody listening, take it or leave it. Um, things that have worked for me in the past, you know, when I, when I was married, obviously, you know, having five kids, there, there is no break. I, I worked, I was the breadwinner. And so I can totally relate to the coming home. Here's the kids and, you know, not really having that break, but you know, one of the, and it's going to sound so simple, but one of the goofiest things that I ever 
realized at one point was just taking turns getting up with the kids too if that <laughs> you know, which which is the most it's such a simple thing but like just okay like on this day you're gonna get up but also being flex flexible with that and obviously open communication back and forth um you know and it depends like every relationship's totally unique and lifestyle and, and you name it right so i mean I, I don't really have a, a good answer for that. I, all I can tell you is that it, it needs to be a priority and um, in one way or another, but it's, it goes back to kind of what I was saying on that be like not being hard on yourself, you know, cause we all, we've seen the posts on Facebook or whatever. If you don't have 20 new skills and this and like, that's, that's bullshit. Like, you know, if, if you make out, of, if you make it out of this crisis and, and, you know, COVID-19 thing alive and with your sanity or even without it, I mean, you're still here. You made it, <laughs> like you know. It, it's that's so. I think it's really focusing um, the lens on the right, you know, on the right thing, right? So focusing on um, the positive things, which is you know, it's a little cliche, but it's like okay, we got through today. Kids got their homework done. You know, we didn't. We didn't, nobody died. We didn't kill each other. <laughs> you know, and and even if that happens understanding that um you know that that's normal and and um with alan and julian we've we've done a few retreats around trauma and you know one of the sayings in trauma with ptsd is you know um trauma you know is having a normal reaction to an abnormal situation so i mean reacting the way that a lot of people are right now in everybody has their own coping mechanisms it, it's it's really there's no right or wrong way to do this so it's um yeah I, I would just my opinion is you know communication and making it a priority or even maybe it's uh you know getting up half an hour early and just doing a quick little breathing exercise or you know and and it's always easier said than done like i won't lie like anybody you know i have ambitions i'm gonna do yoga every morning and do whatever yeah. else but there there's some tools that you know we can share too if if uh if i remember you know, like I used to do something simple like a pranayama exercise, which was an app, you know, that I had and it was 10, 15 minutes and it was just a breathing thing and that would really ground me and bring me into myself. And it goes to the whole um, kind of, you know, the putting your own mask on first, right? You know, which, which I know is cliche and we've all heard it before, but it's so true. And I was actually reading a book um, called like, not plugging this there's no I didn't write this I get no money from this but when children grieve so right now our kids are all going through we all are right the kids as well um going through this process of grief so they're grieving not seeing their friends um and kids love structure they love structure and they love routine routine and I mean there's a million studies out there that that back this up and there's you know smarter people on this on this chat than me that that can that know about this um you know kind of more on the academic side of things but um so it's i think it's just important that you know no matter what's going on you know take the time but like but be kind to yourself right and one another which is you know really all you can do is yeah i really think that's a key that those words that be be kind to yourself and and, and take the time for yourself because i think that at, and i and, and and you just said then it's easier said than done for the last two weeks, I've been saying that I'm going to get up 45 minutes earlier and do some yoga and do some running. But um, it's so funny how um, when you get out of a routine and, and not just you, but your, but your whole family, everything is just completely thrown off. And we've never, we've never really been in this scenario before. And this is alien to us as, as humans. You're right. We like to be, you know, uh, have structure and um, everybody's different. But, but taking the time, I mean... You know, I'm just looking at Alan here and I think that maybe one of Alan's coping strategies is is, is trying on all of his wonderful hats during the day, hey? <laughs> uh, no, actually, well, maybe. Yeah. Um, yeah. What are you doing, Al? Are you, you're out of isolation now, hey? Are you no, working? No, I'm still at home. You're still at home? Yeah, I'm staying in isolation. Yeah. No, I was listening to Paul. I was thinking... Um, I like this, you know, I like, it's nice because I get up, you know, 7.30, 7 o'clock, maybe put the coffee on for my wife, maybe not, but then I can go back to bed. You know, she goes to work and I've worked for 28 years at Alberta Health Services and I went one, one 18 month stretch. I went without taking a single day off other than Saturday and Sunday. 
I went 18 months without taking any holidays. I just, and now it's, it's nice at this age, I'm 60. Um, so my kids are grown up. Um, I, I can, I can do it guilt free and it, it actually feels quite nice. But uh, two questions for Paul. One question, Paul, you mentioned something at the beginning of the, uh, at this discussion and it's insignificant, insignificant to everybody else, but what's an old fashioned? An old fashioned? <laughs> oh, it's a drink, a little bit of bourbon, some simple syrup. Um, I smoke it, I smoke it with cedar. So I get, I get a nice smoky flavor on it and a um, oh. little bit of bitters in there. It's just, good. yeah, nice little, nice can little you, cocktail. Can you put that on meat as well? Like on the it's, barbecue? Can you just <laughs> marinate it with something? <laughs> you could, but that's alcohol abuse. So it's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't want to give, you don't want to give uh, two bottle, two bottle Johnny any. Uh, I <laughs> yeah, good, good <laughs> bourbon's not cheap. You don't, you don't want to, I mean, you can cook with the cheap stuff. But you, don't to, <laughs> you don't put the good bourbon on the barbecue. <laughs> hey, so I said I had another question. My other question was, and I don't think it's going to resonate with maybe a bit with Julian because I sent him some copies of this or some videos, but John doesn't know about it. But I want to know, for, I want to hear from you because I haven't had a chance to talk to you. What was High Lung like? Oh, <laughs> High Lung was awesome. And, and um, do you, maybe do you want to explain to anybody who High Lung is? Maybe we'll put a, a link well, to the video. In I there. think we need to talk about High Lung for sure. Like people need to know about this wild thing. It's pretty incredible. And, 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 and I, ask it, I ask it quite seriously because High Lung is the type of band. I mean, High Lung means healing in German. And um paul and i happened to be talking about this band oh months ago well, i guess it was last fall yeah it's been it's been a while now it's i guess it was in about the a fall. year almost I think. yeah <laughs> and uh paul said he was going to go see them in concert in montreal or somewhere down east yeah yeah and you can go to see them um but it's a type of it's a type of music that can be at the same time very hypnotic and mesmerizing and at the same time well as my daughter says it makes her want to throw salt in her eyes um and so i just wondered what that experience was like for you because it's so different it, it was it was a really cool experience so i mean the it's and again it kind of goes back to that self-care where i struggled for years and years and years doing anything for myself you know to um so i'm gonna go back there really quick and, and why i do these things and go yeah. you know what i can't really afford this but you know i got some points and a cheap place to stay so i'm gonna go right and um so i mean it was it was a really cool experience where uh again like you know and, and telling people i'm going i got the reactions like oh like are you gonna like sacrifice a goat next or whatever because <laughs> they're they're very pagan looking you know like they really you know look like almost satanic for lack of a better term to certain people who don't understand what what you know high long's about right and, and like you said it's in the name healing and so it was it was a really cool experience um it was the trip itself you know i think i had four or five days before that where i was trying to ground but i was really out of sorts and was you know in just a weird space and then uh we were also in a place that was like above a nightclub where it was like <laughs> till like four in the morning every night so it was it got a little tired and grumpy where i was getting ready to you know figure out how to fry the circuits in the building but uh um but uh anyhow um yeah so i had been struggling to you know kind of ground myself and, and get into the right headspace for it but kind of once once we got in there um into the concert it was it was just really cool and um because again it's not like uh it's not like your typical you know drive in your car and listen to high long right like it's really an experience and and everything they do and it, it's very mindful and very thoughtful down to um the instruments they use or you know ancient you know uh, you guys know drums way better than me but <laughs> do you guys you know, like, do you guys want to have a quick little uh snippet they might turn turn us down but let's do it yeah anyways. i i really want to see this hang on hang yeah. on i'll uh i'll share my screen share with sound here we go you ready here we go oh is it gonna work oh oh youtube won't let you those jerks <laughs> <laughs> Well, okay. I had a question. So, so where I was going with this question, for you to go see High Lung, for me actually to see High Lung or people I know would be really stepping outside of the norm for them. It's just, 
it's not the type of music that a lot of people I know listen to. So do you think that um, do like, like, like this isolation and, and this COVID-19 and everything that we've been dealing with, has that encouraged you to kind of step even further outside of the norm for yourself? And would you encourage people to take risks? And if you've, if you've never played an instrument, learn an instrument, if you've never listened to this type of music, grab it and try it. Oh, there it is. <laughs> But well, that's definitely, yeah. That's I'm going to say that's, <laughs> that's, that, that's like a, that's just like a normal night out in a bar in Wales. In, in <laughs> 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 just kind of walk, you know. <clears throat> a lot, yeah, a lot of rhythm and, and actually like a lot cool. of their, their shows are more of a performance, so. Um, so I think that one that was, I can't remember, or I'll pronounce it horribly wrong, so I'm not even going to try, but that, that show was, is more of about um, when you read into it and you understand some of the lyrics, which I don't, I've Googled this obviously, but um, it talks more about like a journey of kind of having these, these peaceful tribes and communities that were forced into war and then kind of going through this and having sacrifice and then, you know, so it's, it's almost like it's a whole performance and a story and you kind of understand it where they go into war and, you know, and one of the things that the lyrics they say in English is, you know, like you don't understand anything but the language of the sword kind of thing. Right. Where, um, you know, and that's kind of society in a way too, where going back to kind of your question, Alan, too, with, with getting outside of comfort zones. And, and I mean, we, we really have an opportunity or many of us do right now to step outside of society or what, what the hell is normal? You know what I mean? Like, like I always joke, I don't trust people that aren't weird because they haven't figured out, you know <laughs> how to let go yet or you know i i do and i don't but it's uh that's why paul he, likes me he's he's so weird it's just it's <laughs> great <laughs> julian's the weirdest for anybody who doesn't know <laughs> but super um, weird it's, yeah i mean i would definitely encourage anybody like even myself like like i said i you know doing my little solo retreat i you know it's i I used to dance and do a lot more and I have more, you know, funny, the older I get, you know, getting closer to 40, but, uh, you know, uh, now I dance more than I used to, but I really dance if that makes sense. Cause I don't, I don't dance for anybody else. And in my own little solo retreat, maybe way too much information for everybody, but I had a little naked dance party, you know, in my living room with just the music cranked and it was, it was freaking awesome. Like it, it was such a great experience. So, I mean, a lot of us have those opportunities to kind of almost lose our minds in a way, in a way, right. In a very healthy way. Cause we're always taught that that's a bad thing. Like, Oh, if you do this, you're weird. And we're so worried about what people think, but like, guess what? Everybody is at home going batshit crazy right now, you know, and who knows what they're doing. And that's, that's their own thing. So, I mean, I think it's really important and a really great opportunity, like you said, to, to find a drum, you know, I, I grabbed, I grabbed my drum too, and was, you know, banging the drum, and, and that's what kind of led to the dancing, and, um, you know, there, there's a lot of opportunity to do a lot of self-exploration in, into oneself, right, and again, it's, it's harder if you're, you know, stuck at home with kids and everything, but bring them into it, I mean, like, I have living room dance parties with my kids, and so that's, I guess, going back to your question uh, earlier, John, about, you know, how do you let off that steam and everything? Well, get the kids in there. Like, there's nothing more ridiculous than, you know, or fun, I should say, not ridiculous, but, you know, fun and kind of freeing to just dance like an idiot, you know? <laughs> like I, I just, just had a, a dance party on the trampoline outside just today before this po podcast. It's finally double digits in Calgary. It's beautiful. And uh, we got shut down by the neighbors. So there you go. No. <laughs> The dancing was that bad? No, no, it was the, it was the music. The music was really oh, loud and really God brutal. On. My my oh. daughter's like, Dad, I want to listen to the Descendants. Can I just listen to the Descendants? I'm like, whatever you want, man. As long as you're happy, let's go. So here was we the go. volume was the volume high? Oh yeah, it? it was it was loud. Well, that was a stupid question, wasn't it? Like, 
What time of yeah. the day? What time of the day was it? Literally, like uh, it was it was dinner time, so they they were having dinner. It was totally fine. Like I I love my neighbors. That was oh, not okay. a knock towards okay. my neighbors. I'm just saying, we were having a dance party, and it was it was amazing, and I love that, and I love Paul. You know, I think if nobody takes anything away else away from this podcast, dance naked in your house. <laughs> I do it all the time. It's good times. It's... I tried to get my wife doing it, but she won't have none of it. <laughs> um, I, I think you're right, though, Paul. That definitely that that fear of being judged is is one thing that's that's before all this COVID nineteen was happening F- for me as well. Um, just letting go and letting loose and just being a little bit silly and and um, it's it's so important. I've discovered like I think everybody's discovering something new about themselves um, over the past few weeks that and they um, and a lot of people have actually started doing a lot of things, a lot of activities that maybe they wouldn't have done before. Um, so um, for me, I've rediscovered my passion for Lego, like. Oh, yeah. Yeah. My son and my daughter absolutely love Lego. And um, it's so funny how um, even in sometimes in, in your own home, you think, oh, it, the, the outside world kind of creeps in. And you're like, well, maybe I shouldn't do that. But then you're right. When you realize that I'm not being judged in my own home and I can practice what I preach and start right here and then eventually feed out. I think that's real crucial, especially for now. And And yes, you're right. Now is the time to to really try something new. There's a lot of things out there. It's, it's a perfect time to try something new and explore and, and really push yourself and, and not be afraid to fail. And, um, you know, so I, I really like what you said there. I think too, we also have to um, put in, put this all into perspective, this, this whole isolation piece. Um, what we might be in isolation for two weeks, two months, who knows? Um, but, I, I, th- I think to put it into perspective and I, my daughter called me up the other day and, and, and said this to me, she said, remember dad, that Anne Frank and her an entire family were in isolation in a tiny flat in, in the Netherlands or in Amsterdam on the second floor in an attic for over 700 days. That's insane. You know, we have it so nice. And, and I think, Alan, this is what you bring to the table every time I have a conversation with you is perspective. Um, you know, I think we are so blessed. Myself, you know, I'm coming, I can only speak for myself, but we're coming from a privileged standpoint. And, and you, you spoke about this uh, the first time we, we talked uh, when we had our episode one of the isolation podcast. And, and you said the first words that came out of your mouth were, I'm coming from a, you know, I, I consider myself extremely privileged and you know what we are, you know, like, um, in North America, you know, we have a government that actually cares and is doing their best to, to try to mitigate some of the challenges that are going on and, and to me, you know, like just let people hopefully uh, abide by some of these, these uncomfortable you know, legislations around physical distancing and and everything like that. But, you know, I think we're still coming at it from an extremely privileged lens. And, and so um, shifting the focus, looking at, you know, instead of looking at what I can't do, what do I have? What, what, what am I surrounded by? You know, um, the fact that we have this, we can do this, like, like 20 years ago, we couldn't connect with anybody. You know what I mean? Like, you know, like this, you know, this, this whole story of being in, in a concentration camp or, or hiding in an attic of a a building or whatever. And the, the, like, you're not talking to anyone. You don't have a book. You probably don't have anything, you know, like it's, it's uh, you know, I think we need to really not forget and lose touch with the, the whole aspect of perspective. And I think, I think, Thank you, Julian. I think this is bringing out, um, or for me anyway, just um, hearing people, hearing he, hearing people talk on the radio, uh, on talk shows, or um, standing outside on my deck and and strangers walking past the sidewalk and and calling up to me and saying hey and chatting and stuff like that. Um, you know, how did Viktor Frankl survive 
in, in Man, like in Man's search for meaning. How did he survive the concentration camps? How did I, I think he was in Auschwitz or um, I, I think it was Auschwitz. Anyways, wherever he was, his entire family died. And I think what set Viktor Frankl apart from his contemporaries is uh, Freud and, and some of the others is that he saw that humans are driven to do good. Even, even some, and as he said this, some of the Nazis, he survived because some of the Nazis were driven to do good to keep him alive for whatever reason, even, and, and he refused to hate. He refused to be, to be filled with bitterness. And, and, and I think if, if, if anything, and I, and, and, and please, I, I hope I don't piss anybody off because I'm really not comparing what's happening now to what's happening, what happened in the second world war. Not at all. It's, there's absolutely zero, zero comparison there. I mean, that was absolutely horrific, horrendous, one of the worst um, atrocities against a, a, against a, a, you know a, an attempted at genocide against a a, a, a a people. But I, I think maybe um, uh, that we can take something from this, and 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 if it's understanding that out of this difficulty that we're experiencing now and we're experiencing it globally, something positive can happen. Something good can come out of this. So Alan, what would you be taking away from this? If just today, if, if tomorrow it, all of this was done and I'm going to go down the line. So Paul and John, and I'll answer myself, but Alan, what okay. would you take away from this? Um, slow down. Take time for people around you. Um, hug people because the coronavirus is gone now we're not social distancing learn to hug if you've never been a hugger learn to say i love you learn to express those deeper feelings step outside of your comfort zone to help somebody not because it's going to make you feel good for having been altruistic but you do do good for others because it's good for them because when we do good for others Sure, it makes us feel better, but that shouldn't be the motivation. The motivation to do good is because there are people suffering in the world that need our help, that need assistance, locally, globally, anywhere. And, and I think maybe, maybe that's what I would take from it. I'm getting teary just listening to you talk, Alan. What about you, Paul? What would you take away? What would be your... Ooh, that's a tough one. Um... I, I totally agree with Alan, you know, what, what he's saying. And I, I would add to that too, is, is not to forget about yourself, you know? Um, and that was, that was my own journey and why, why I burnt out and why so many people do is, is because we, and, and it sounds selfish in a way, but we all can be a little more selfish. We, we kind of have an opportunity to be a little more selfish right now, but not be, not in a, you know, not in a, being a dick kind of way, you know, in the, in the way where it is beneficial to the world. And, and I'll give you kind of a weird example of, of when I had my, you know, my crisis and my journey or awakening or whatever you want to call it, you know, 13, 14 years ago or whatever the hell it was. Um, uh, again, I was, re I was really, really hard on myself and I did everything for everybody else. And, and you know, I, I, I learned a, a really good lesson from a lot of really, really good teachers. Um, and, you know, some of them were um, kind of just around, again, putting your own mask on first and, and, but remembering that that's okay. Like that's okay to take care of yourself because you need to take care of yourself to be whole for others. And then, something as simple as I realized my entire life and maybe a lot of people, you know, can relate to this, my, my entire life and where I, and we didn't really dive into my whole story, but um, I, you know, I found myself in, you know, borderline suicidal place, just like, like, sorry for swearing if the F word's not allowed, but like this fucking sucks and it needs to change. I'm either, I'm either going to kill myself or not, or going somewhere and it needed to change. And one of the biggest things I learned, was that self-care and then putting myself first and, and something as simple as doing everything for me first. I do love and I help people and I love everybody I can for me first because it feels, if I'm not full, I can't help anybody. 
And so when I'm full and I do that because it makes me feel good, it fills me up. I have so much more to give, if that makes sense. And just kind of a simple context that it was given to me at the time. And, you know, I've taken my own journey with it, but something as simple as cleaning the house or, you know, doing something for your wife or your partner or whatever it might be. Um, you know, I'm going to vacuum the house cause I want my wife to be happy. And it's like, well, no, like that's secondary to I'm going to vacuum the house because I like living in a clean house and I feel good about doing something for others. And so, um, yeah, that, that's kind of what popped into my head when, when Alan was talking about that. And, you know, it's, it's, it's important to, to learn how to be there for others, but also be there for yourself. So, and, and that's, again, like everything else, it's a lot easier said than done. It's something that is always up and down, but it's important to, it, it, that changed my life, you know, doing, doing everything for myself first in a, in a loving way. Um, so that I was, I was full here and then everything else trickled down. I just had, you know, my fountain was always flowing and I could, when you're not taking from the top and always giving to everybody else, you have nothing to give eventually and you run out. Right. And so when you're always filling yourself up, you, you have something to do. So full disclosure, Paul's given me this advice uh, many times. He's like, Julian, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta make sure that you fill yourself up so that you can continue to give to other people. And I think that's, that's really I think that rings a lot of truth for many people right now. John, what would you take away? Oh my gosh. I think you guys have said some, uh, I mean, I echo kind of what you guys have said already. Um, for me, it's, uh, I really miss um, the power of human touch. I really miss um, being able to, uh, you know, my, my mum has a habit of, of popping around for a, a cuppa, as they say, a cup of tea, uh, once a week and it's, you know, 15, 20 minutes, but I, I really miss, uh, the power of a, of a hug. Um, it was my son's birthday this weekend, his fourth birthday. And, um, so my family did drive-bys and it was, um, my son was really happy, but, but selfishly, I, I was really bummed out that I couldn't, you know, greet them and give them a hug. And so I think, um, with that and, and just being appreciative of the smaller things, you know, um, just being appreciative of, you know, of, again, excited about walking through the door and the kids running up to you and, and, you know, welcoming you home. And, you know, that, that at the moment that, that makes my day. I, I, you know, I came home today and, you know, although I met with, you know, daddy, play with me, Lego fight. Ah, like I, I really enjoy, um, being welcomed home by my wife and kids. And, um, I really, I really appreciate that at the moment. So just the little small things that I would have taken for granted before, I, I, I suppose. Um, and 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 connection too and and i'll say it again i'm i'm really really bummed out about not seeing my family at the moment and obviously not seeing everybody at the you know at the at the drumming community but um you know i i never thought i'd say this but i'm really missing my family like it's so again just being appreciative of of what you have and not taking things for granted and you know if there's a if there's a party planned in the future, I'm, I'm there 30 minutes early now. I'm not like 30 minutes late. Um, so um, for me, take, take note of the smaller things that we can see now. Man. Uh, can I just you okay, Jim? Yeah, Are you okay? Know. Can you guys see, can you guys see me getting all emotional here? Like you need I, a tissue? I'm okay. I'm good. Good, man. Thanks, man. Um, I, you know, this whole human touch, I think is a big one for sure. For sure. I, um, I think I have a lot of gratitude for, um, <clears throat> just my Friday nights in, in Englewood, um, just missing the drumming community, missing getting out there and, and playing. Um, I think one of the biggest takeaways for me is that um, it's okay not to be okay. Um, I think this is, is an ongoing theme for me, but, um, you know, when I play the drums, 
even though I'm presenting something forward, for example, for the Friday night drumming and meditation that's going to be tomorrow at eight o'clock. So tune in. Um, you know, when I do that, um, you show up and you, you kind of, ex you kind of have this, this expectation that you place on yourself. I, let's speak from myself. I place an expectation on myself to be able to offer some positive energy, some joy, um, some hope, maybe a little bit of entertainment, who knows, um, a familiar, familiar face. But it, behind all of that, um, there's a guy there that still needs to um, get enough sleep, eat, um, kiss his kids and his wife, make sure that he does his part around the house, um, help, help out, you know, um, just because the world appears to stop spinning, it doesn't mean that I, I need, I stop spinning. And, um, and everybody has their cross to bear, if you will. Um, so every, and everyone's cross looks different. And so um, not being in envy of other people's situations, but more so allowing, allowing yourselves to just make sure that your own um, house is in order before moving on and looking outside. And, and I think that's my biggest takeaway, just to make sure that my house is in order, that um, I'm taken care of, similar to what Paul is saying, but also my family's taken care of. I'm doing what I need to do to make sure that um, I'm keeping those who are close to me in healthy. And, uh, and that's including my relationships too. And also another one too, and, and this one's a little bit more lighthearted is it's actually really easy to stay in touch with friends. I mean, like I've heard from many and I'm not very good at it. So just, I'm still working on it, but I've heard from many people say since this whole isolation thing, I've been in touch with my mother-in-law and my uncle from Halifax and the people from Australia. And, and they're like, we're having meetings all the time and it's great. Why does that have to stop? Right. I don't know. So I would yeah. say, keep that going. You're right though. I, I, I find that uh, I'm talking to my family more now than I was before. And you're right, simple thing as a phone and you have the FaceTime and there's all these apps where you can kind of have like a mini conference. Like why did it take an event like this to, to force us into that? It's habit? because we're, we're kind of messed up. We need, we need yeah. to be faced with, with, it's either evolve or die. The evolution cycle is always there. And as creatures, as human beings, we are always going to be, if, unless we're faced with, a transformational wall, like Paul's story of saying, I'm either going to die, I'm either going to take my own life, or I'm going to change. Um, I think, and I think I would, I would love to just take the last five, 10 minutes. This is a big topic, but I would love to take the last five and 10 minutes to, to speak a little bit about the mental health component. And Paul, you're doing a lot of work um, around mental health and things like that. Um, John, Alan and myself, we're all mental health professionals, two rec therapists in the mental health world. Myself, I'm a social worker in the mental health world. We're advocates for mental wellness, for self-care. Um, you shared a little bit about your story, but, um, you know, I guess, I don't know, like, how do you envision, um, not necessarily around the, this whole COVID-19 thing, but, you know, how do you envision, um, how we manage maybe the, 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 the aftermath of what we're going to do, you know, what, what's going to happen and what are you doing um, to maybe prepare for this? Because I know that from our standpoint, you know, the, the health system is saying it's going to happen. Things are going to come, but you're, you're on the other side. You're kind of more on the, um, the healing side, you know, where you're offering workshops and, and things like that. What are you doing to prepare and how can people maybe get involved? in what you're doing. Okay. 
<laughs> um, oh, that's a tough one, Julian. <laughs> it doesn't need, it doesn't I, need to be specific. Just just I, maybe say, tell us more a little bit about kind of your ideas. What and, in, before I go there, I, I, what popped in my head when you were talking, and I appreciate your vulnerability, you know, that if I'm reading between the lines there a little too, you know, um, is again, going back to being easy on yourself right because that that in my experience personally has brought me down that spiral of oh i'm depressed oh what a loser for him why am i depressed you know like that can be really and then you know somebody might watch you know this this podcast or another podcast and oh, look at look at those people with their shit together right and it's kind of that grass is greener nobody has their shit together if, if i guess if anybody's struggling take that away too or I have I have bad days like anybody and so does Julian and Alan and John like you know we all do that's so human anybody who doesn't like please tell me the secret you know and, and so that's the thing where the work is never done and um you know with with love and everything like I'm doing I mean you know, I'll share more about that later it doesn't feel like the right time but there's so much where we you going back to privilege what you said earlier Julian we are so privileged where there's online help communities. There's like, there's so many resources where, like you said, you know, even 10 years ago, uh, 10, 20 years ago, we didn't have these resources. Now almost every yoga studio and every yoga teacher is offering free yoga. There's free meditation courses. There's free whatever, you know, and, and so again, letting go of that self judgment and then also that need for validation and external judgment as well from other people, right? Of going, this is what's gonna work for me um and that's i guess again speaking from my own experience like letting go of like not giving a fuck is the greatest thing you can ever do for yourself <laughs> like let needing letting go of the need for validation of like you know um like i i remember going on my my first the retreat i went on and you know i went on this you know healing retreat kind of thing and, and i was like well people think i'm weak whatever and it's like who gives a shit like being vulnerable being vulnerable and asking for help and doing whatever you need to do is is strong. And, and in my hope, I hope that that's the takeaway from the general consciousness of people is that we've gone away from material things are useless, you know, the, like in a, you know, broad context, right? You can sit in your $5 million home, but there's, there's the guy in his $5 million home and the guy who can barely pay rent and one might be happy and one might not. Like it doesn't matter. All these things we've learned really matter our community and connection and people and again we put on these masks and we go out in the world and look at me in the world of society doing my job and you know like everybody's had a chance to go holy shit that wasn't working for me and and like i would just encourage people to know that you're not alone like we're all doing that like everybody if not and i don't want to speak for everybody i can't do that but most people are sitting at home going like fuck what i was doing screw my nine to five like you know like this why was i doing this like for who you know why you know and and so yeah, yeah. i agree i agree with you i i'm in the same boat as you paul like i it's we can access that now right now on 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 at our fingertips social media like it it, it drives uh, one thing i've learned over the past few weeks that people's need for validation it drives me insane it's one of my triggers like and i think um i mean there's times where you give someone praise and you validate and you know as, as healthcare professionals we do that every single day right um but um i think one thing that a lot of people are learning right now is that being isolated and being at home i think we've identified our stresses i think we've we've managed to identify them so a lot of a lot of that now for a lot of people was work. A lot of people now are working from home. Um, so they've identified that it's not just work, there's other stresses out there, but people are already practicing how to deal with those stresses right now. My only thing is I think when things go back to normal, and they will, they'll go back to normal, I think a lot of people are going to be at that crossroads. And we've said this in the past few weeks with, with our podcast as well, is that you're either going to go left or you're going to go right. Do you go left and go back to the way things were before and you carry on, um, you know, with those stresses, those everyday stresses that you've already identified? You, 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 you go back or do you stay on this path where you have that attitude and, you know, excuse my French, fuck what people think. 
I don't need validation. Like I, 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 I create my own validation. Like I, you know, I do things for me. Do you continue down that, that path? And I think for me, not just as a health professional, but as a, you know, a, a, a person, a father, a husband, son, brother, like, I think that's where I'm going to struggle is I'm going to get to that fork in the road and go, do I continue doing what I'm doing now to try and help myself? Or do I just go back to the way things were because it was comfortable, but I know it's going to stress the hell out of me. So I don't know what do, you guys are health professionals. What do you, what do you think? Well, I was just sitting here thinking, um, I think, I think one of our biggest roadblocks is this need to be important to somebody. And I think when we, once we divest ourselves of this belief that we are important, that we um, need to be important in some capacity to anybody other than those closest to us, uh, our families, um, we remove, I think, uh, this, this heavy burden to have to perform uh, according to somebody else's standard. That, and they're not placing that burden upon us. We're, we're shouldering that burden uh, of our own free will. And I think, but we do it blindly. We do it without, without knowing how heavy that burden, because we, we don't even know sometimes that, we, that we're shouldering it. So I, th I think, you know, there are 7 billion people on the planet right now. And, you know, in the, in the, in, in, in the broader scheme of things, we're just not that important. Yeah, we, we we're, just we're really aren't. <laughs> so, so, you know what, get out there and, 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 and be happy, live as if you were happy. If you're not happy, try to imagine what, it, what, what a happy, how a happy person would live. Try to imagine how somebody who is really self-actualized, what they would be doing and, and live like that. You know, dance naked in your living room when nobody else is around. Sing at the top of your lungs. If you don't want anybody to hear you, then do it in the privacy of your home, but take a risk and do, do something different and, and do it not for anybody else, but do it to release that, um, to, to help release that burden of, of, of having to behave a, a certain way according to a certain standard um, because it is just so inhibiting. And, 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 and I think it addresses, this I think addresses what, what Paul was also saying. When we do that for ourselves, we become so much more effective at being parents and, and siblings and lovers and friends. We become such, we become better friends, better lovers, better, better partners. Well said, Alan. Thanks. Yeah. So we went over, um, we had an intervention about addiction. And then <laughs> we just, we just covered uh, how to become better lovers. So we had a, a sexual health class. <laughs> <laughs> We we taught people how to dance naked in their um, in their living room living rooms or wherever. Anyways, in, in their homes, in the privacy of their homes. And I refuse to be part of a podcast to teach people how to do that. Yes, yeah, that's a slippery slope into a whole different <laughs> kind of stream. You know, and and just for the record, we're recapping this episode. We've probably dropped the most f bombs that we ever have in this uh, the history of the Three Amigos podcast. But the real question is: Alan has a hat, John has a hat, I have a hat on. Paul, how does your hair look so good during this COVID nineteen <laughs> thing? I cut it myself, believe it or not. No. <laughs> I did. It took me an hour and a bit, but <laughs> turn around. Let's see if you get the back straight. The, the back's not bad. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty proud of this. It was, I had a bit of a fade before and then it just kind of went to just detaching it. Cause then I can just keep shaving the sides and doing this. So, but yeah. <laughs> so, so little did you know when I asked Paul about what he's doing after this is he's giving online podcasts on how to cut your own hair. <laughs> <laughs> While dancing naked in the living room. Well, dancing naked, yeah. What can I, I honestly, <laughs> I think, I think everyone who is, uh, uh, you know, anyways, I don't want to generalize, but I think <laughs> a lot of people would be interested in seeing that. But I'll cut. I'll. I'll. That's where I sign off. <laughs> <laughs> 
Paul, this has been a lot of fun. Thank you so much for coming on. Um, you know, any last words or last thoughts that you'd like to share with some people before we sign off? Uh, I think just going back to that, being kind to yourself and, you know, take the opportunity to remember that this is, this can be a gift in, in the right context, you know, um, but also it doesn't happen overnight. Like it, it's, you know, um, just thinking about what you guys are talking about when life goes back to normal and going back to your job, like don't expect the day one. Okay. I know exactly what I'm supposed to do. It's going to take time. Right. So again, re realizing, and that's been my own experience where I think I have all the answers and then I don't know shit. Right. <laughs> like, and that's just kind of life where you're never done. You're it's, and, and it can be a bridge too. Right. So this is a bridge to a new chapter in everybody's life. Right. And it doesn't, there's no, well, I mean, there is a final destination. Hopefully we, we all are around for a while, you know, to, to live our best lives. So that's, uh, yeah, I don't know if that, if that makes any sense. I don't know shit. So, <laughs> you know what? I, I think you do. <laughs> I, I agree. You know, you're, you're one of the most, um, you're a very humble guy and, uh, your, humi your humility is something that I, that is very, um, when I speak to you, I feel and I sense that humility and it's quality in you that I respect and I really admire. And so thank you. And, but like Alan said, yeah, you do buddy. And I love how you speak from a place of vulnerability. And, and so if anybody's out there who who's tuned in today, just for a moment or for the entire duration, just make, do yourself a favor and follow um, creation Republic, which is kind of Paul's big uh, picture thing. Um, and then also Wub Gathering, uh, which is more the retreats. And then you've got lots of other projects on the on the go. That um, so check out his bio. Yeah, He's got the things on hold. <laughs> well, I yeah. mean, who who is to blame? You're not to blame. I mean, this is this is how no. it is. But but we can expect great things. And and uh, and anybody who wants to get behind Paul, um, you know, uh, with any kind of. Um, sponsorship or financial support or anything like that if you're tuning in and you like what paul is saying um you know he's he's the guy to talk to and and so get in touch with him and uh if the canadian mental health association is listening we want to work with you and do some good work but we need to get paid as well so there you go <laughs> yeah <laughs> Thanks, Julian. And, yeah. and right back at you. I mean, uh, yeah, we've got to know each other really well. And, and, and same with you and, and, and Alan and John we just met tonight. But, uh, you know, just I, I feel very blessed to be surrounded with just kind hearted, authentic, integral people. So I, uh, I appreciate you having me on. All right. This is how we sign off on the drumming. We got to do the, the little rumble. Everybody rumble. Come on, Paul. Show us your naked dancing. <laughs> I'm proving I have pants on. <laughs> we'll see you guys next week. Take care. Bye.